Hello members, LA here. It's December 7th. Uh, this is the um, weekly review where we take a look at uh, what happened last week, uh, what's going to happen the next uh, few weeks, uh, next week or two, and uh, you know, a, a good glance at the portfolio. We look at fundamentals, technicals, you name it. Uh, try to get a good feel for where we are and uh, where we might be in the coming weeks or so. So, um, you know, last week if you remember, we actually had um, a setup on the S&P that was arguing for some sort of a sideways move, and that was a, a two-bar reversal, even though slight, but a two-bar reversal up here at the highs. Uh, it didn't turn out that way, which is, is, you know, again, another sign to us that this market is resilient um, for lack of a better adjective right doesn't want to come back uh, never wants to come back so this little two bar reversal lower volume ends up kind of going sideways but actually gaining slightly on the week and you can see that here in the numbers of the S&P actually tacked on a little bit more of a gain last week with the uh, 0.4 Russell was the leader NASDAQ was lagging. That's mostly big cap tech stocks, uh, in particular the big three, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. So another positive week. Uh, gains continue to, uh, to roll up here. And, you know, it won't always be that way. That We always have to, you know, stay on guard for, you know, what can go wrong and, and keep watching for situations that tell us that we need to take risk off. But until, you know, until it gives us something along those lines, we have to keep trying to stay with uh, what is working, what continues to work. So looking at the, you know, the technical and fundamental picture here, you know, the indexes keep pressing new highs or hanging at those highs. You know, the only place we don't have that happening really is in the broad uh, NDX and the composite. They keep dealing with this uh, December 1st uh, bar. Uh, tops 4782 here on the composite. You got right up to it. You know, it's either going to break it this week and make new highs, or we're going to start to break back down to the bottom of the bar. Now, last Monday was the down day. You know, maybe we get one tomorrow on a down day. Um, you know, nothing was impressive last week, but nothing was horrible either. Um, but we could consolidate here for a little bit longer. There's really no new news this week. Um, there, there's nothing out here uh, to press us higher, but on the flip side, you know, we have a strong trending market. It has been strong trending, and, and, and until this changes, right, we just have to assume that trend's going to continue. And, you know, maybe we consolidate a little bit more. You know, maybe we just poke on up to new highs. We've got new highs in some of the indexes, but not in the others, so that's divergence. We certainly have new highs over in sectors. You know, if we look at the sectors, the only one that can't get going, of course, is the XLE, but uh, the IBB, the SOX, I mean, all of these are pressing new highs. They're, they're, not, they're not backing off at all. S&P powering higher on the financials in particular, uh, also on healthcare, as that one soars to new highs. So there's there's not a lot out here. If you're looking for negatives, there's just not a lot out here that shows negative activity. I mean, for the most part, it continues to be positive uh, right across the board. Uh, world markets the same. You know, we're not seeing those hurt. Um, they continue to, to push higher. The dollar keeps strengthening, and eventually that's probably going to be an issue, although it's about halfway to where it's trying to go in terms of the uh, technical structure it's in. The most important thing is there just are no structures in place to give us some sort of a serious pullback. I don't, I don't see anything out here yet that suggests we're going to get a pullback of any kind of size. And if I pop over to the S&P again, and if we think about, you know, where could this thing pull back to if it wants to, and this being the, one of the strongest ones, you know, you've got some little consolidation here, but the real support is still back here, as you can see. 
And that's the area that we have to keep thinking that if we come back, you know, that's the area that we can come back to. That drop, if it were to car, uh, occur, you know, is about 4% 4, 4 or so. And that's not insignificant. That's a fairly decent move to the backside. Notice that you have a swing point high over here as well. It hasn't been tested. You know, get a breakout with no test. We've gone four bars up. You know, if you get two more, you know, anywhere up here, that's going to be a high probability buy on the way back. So for right now, you know, unless we come back before the end of the year, you're going to have good support underneath this on a high probability retest regenerate buy, at least for a trade at worst. So when I look at this, you know, I just don't see anything that's telling me this market's going to come back. Technical negatives, the worst thing that can be said is that we just haven't had a retrace. And that 4 and 5% I was just showing you uh, looks to me to be about as much as you can expect on the way down. I just showed you the biotechs, the chips, the financial, healthcare. They keep going up. You know, if we look at the MTTFs, and I'm pulling over the one we just did was the S&P. You're about at 50% here now. Just turning bullish, you know, it's not very extended at all. Of course, we're extremely overextended on the long term. Eventually, we're going to get a pullback. And I'm going to, um, you know, go into something here in a second that may be what leads to it. And uh, that would be next year if it's going to happen. But, uh, you know, at some point, we are going to see trend, transition on the long-term time frame. Uh, it's just, you know, central banks have, have propped us up um, for a long time, and um, there are some things that can lead uh, to that. But right now, you know, the MTTFs still good. Uh, the bullish structures are still in place. We could still get more of a move, and I expect us to get more of a move uh, before we see any kind of serious pullback. Popping to the positives on the fundamental side, ECB, Japan, China, all those guys really pushed these markets again last week. Um, even though ECB didn't do anything, you know, the expectation, as you could see in the way the FXE traded, the expectation is that the ECB is going to act. And so if I pull up the FXE, you can see it popped up on the news that nothing was happening but then what happens the very next day actually that day it reversed and the very next day it's out here setting new lows and so that's a pretty clear indication of what the market expects to happen so central banks big prop up and what i was alluding to just a second ago is the you know the huge driver in this move up has really been uh, in the buybacks that companies have been doing. It's, it's not the rise in, in revenues, you know, the revenue stream. You know, the earnings per share has been huge, but the sales per share, right? The money that corporations are bringing in, how much that's increasing is minimal. I mean, just look at the huge difference. You know, this is what's driving this market. You know, it's this revenue, uh, this earnings per share, why is that so high? Well, it's because the corporations are buying back shares in a massive amount. And I'm probably going to do an article this week on this because it's, it's really the driver. And as we move closer and closer to that point where the zero interest rate policy that's been in effect for basically five years as that policy, at least here in the United States, potentially starts to shift and interest rates start to go up, and especially if they start to move up fairly fast, this number is no longer going to be going up like it has. It's going to be leveling out and actually heading down, and unless we start to see sales per share pick up, or actually just revenues pick up, in other words, corporations actually selling more stuff. Unless that happens, I don't see how this market continues to go up. The, the big driver in the share price is here, and this is a result of companies buying back their shares, reducing the inventory of shares out there, which if, you know, earnings per share is earnings divided by the number of shares outstanding. 
If there's fewer shares outstanding, the earnings per share go up. That's what's been driving this thing. And that has been a result of what the central banks have been doing. You know, they've made it so that corporations, because they can't, you know, used to, you would get an economic revival as a result of corporations going out and saying, hey, I think that we can sell more stuff, therefore we should invest in plant and equipment. That's not happening. It hasn't been happening. Yeah, they're repairing stuff, but they're not really expanding because they don't see expanding sales. So what do they do with all that money they're making? They go buy their shares back, and they push up their earnings as a result of it on a per share basis. So, and, and, and actually a lot of that money is, is not repatriated to the United States, so a lot of this is borrowing in order to do it. And that's why I keep saying if the interest rates start to rise, you're going to see that change. And if that changes, that's going to put a crimp in this market. It's supply and demand, folks. And right now, there's not enough quote-unquote supply. As a result, price keeps going up. So getting back to it, so that I think you know is something for us to watch over time. Uh, right now, it's still a positive. It's a huge positive. At some point, I suspect it's not going to be. The negatives, you know, central banks have to keep stimulating, and that tells us something about the world economy. I know we keep seeing decent, you know, numbers here in the United States. Just saw the employment numbers as big as they were last Friday, but you know, the the real key on a global scale is that. You know, the global marketplace is not in great shape. I mean, it's not in horrible shape, but it's not in great shape. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to keep stimulating. We, we, we wouldn't have to keep doing currency devaluations. What to watch for the coming week? I think there's very little news. If you look at the, you know, the news flow, we'll see that here in a second. Uh, there's some more industrial production numbers. But outside of that, there's just not much. There's some PPI, CPI numbers in Europe, uh, which will be watched. But I don't see anything that market moving. You know, next... The following week, we're going to have the Fed meeting. That's probably going to be the last big thing before the end of the year. And I think the main thing this week is can the NASDAQ, the index and the composite, can they actually get up and over that breakdown bar from the first? If they can, I suspect we're going to start that leg higher into the end of the year. We're not quite there, but it's trying to. If it does, that will probably push us. Again, economic earnings, there are really no earnings on tap. Uh, economic flow here. Uh, you get some price index stuff, some production numbers, but that's about it. There's not much. Geopolitically, Putin is still going to be the problem at some point. With the huge decline in oil prices and with the ruble getting killed as a result of it, and Putin being as isolated as he is and falling revenues internally, you know, as he becomes more desperate, I suspect that he will do more desperate things. And so, you know, if I had one place to look at and to worry about, it would be there. Bottom line, you know, starting with and participating in this latest leg higher has been, you know, it's been a tough run higher. I mean, and I don't mean that it was worrisome. It was just hard to get on board. Unless you bought those breakouts, there wasn't much retrace to buy, right? We, we've seen that, you know, over and over when we look at these charts. You know, off this bottom, if you just didn't buy this run higher, you got left out. Now, we, we did, you know, recognize that we had to get into this market back down in this time frame, and that was a result of the fact that, you know, we, we had a retest regenerate, and I think it was right about here. We had a retest regenerate that told us that this market wasn't going to come out, that it was a range trade at worst, right? And as this thing kept inching up and up and up, we kept trying to find positions in, and then we tried to ride them as far as we could. Now, you know, if we had our druthers, we would have wanted to be longer, but we just didn't get into enough of it. So we rode what we had, and we made some decent gains on those, and we still have some of those in place, and I still think we can make some more. It's just that it's been a tough trade you know, to get long, stay long, and to do, you know, nothing but that. So, you know, from that perspective, yeah, it's it's been a tough road to stay with this thing. It's been challenging. But to date, there really are no signals that this thing's going to fail, and therefore we just have to stay with it. 
we have the potential for failures, right? If this NASDAQ NDX composite divergence actually fails, in other words, we can't get over that December 1st high, right? Then, you know, if that sets up, you know, then that's a different story. And here's that high. Here we are coming back into it. We can see that we can't get over it. If we get back underneath this, right, that low is 4274, then to me that would be a failure and we could get the deeper retrace, you know, the 4% or so. But unless that happens, right, there just isn't anything out here to tell us this market's going to trade lower. Looking at the portfolios, um, you know, if we go back and look at them, uh, you know, we, we sold out some stuff, took some partial profits, and, uh, you know, the, the usual stuff, right, in and out of a few things. I want to look at uh, Baidu and MFRM. You can read the rest of these. They're in your notes. Uh, you can see all the details here. But I want to kind of focus on those two because, um, you know, they point out, you know, every week I'm trying to do a little bit of an education here uh, about why I'm doing what I'm doing. So uh, let's focus on those and see what they're like. So let's start with Baidu. Uh, Baidu was actually an interesting case because Baidu was coming back into a retest regenerate. You know, we haven't had a lot of opportunity to pick on things that we're retesting and regenerating. That's typically where I try to buy. Uh, the reason is most stocks will come back. You know, look, about 70% of the time they do on a bullish trend. And so what you like to do is let these things go up, do whatever they're going to do, and then fade back in and give you a buy. You got a big bar here. I believe this was off of earnings, if I remember right. Retest, regenerate off this prior swing point high. That's this zone. And as you can see, it came into the zone, popped back out of it. Of course, now the question will be is can it push higher? Where's the, the real test? Well, the huge test is going to be right here in this area is can it get up over that? If it can, you know, then it's going to go right back up to the highs. So you buy a good entry, right? You can have your stops down below it and you're shooting for the highs. And that reward to risk, you can see between here and here, the reward and the risk is very good, very much in your favor. That's the ideal kind of a buy. Unfortunately, we were able to, you know, wiggle into this one on that buy. Let's look at MFRM. Uh, this is um, the uh, mattress firm. Uh, this was earnings bar. As you know, we sold some up here. I don't remember exactly where it was, but we sold some almost at the top. Then we put a stop in underneath this on earnings. And it did take us out of the stop. And then we had a re-entry order around 65, almost 66. A re-entry order. And then, of course, this thing is sold off further. Now, that's not a great entry. And if you look at the way this is sold off in terms of volume, at this point, you want to get out of this thing. And so I, I want to get back out of it. I want to you know, salvage what I can, and I want to do that if it allows me to. And when I look at this, I see an under over here on less volume on Friday. Uh, that is a good suggestion that we're going to get some sort of a bump. So then the next thing is to measure up where that bump can go. You can see a swing point low here. Uh, that volume is there. That's probably as much as we can expect. There's a retest regenerate off of this low that also may tell us whether it's a range trade or not. High there is 63.96. The high on this one 64.77. Now if I pop over and look at the weekly, uh, I can see there that we have, uh, and here's the weekly, and let me take off the markings. I can see there that we have these two big bars in between here, right? And the lows on these, 60, uh, excuse me, 56.38 excuse me, not the lows, uh, I'm, I'm switching context here, the high of this high volume bar, 64.78. So 64.78 here, and if I go back now to the daily, that 64.78 is roughly the top of this bar. And so you can see that's as, probably as much as we can expect out of this. Now we bought in around 65. So it's going to be a loss to get out, but that's a minimal loss compared to what this thing could do. And the only way we're going to know if it's a range trade or not is if it gets back over this high. So the first thing to do is to monitor this, decide if it can get over it or not. If it can, then we should be able to get out about where we got in, maybe a small loss. 
if that's true, in other words, if it gets over this, that puts it back into a range trade and says that, hey, maybe at some point we want to trade it again. But right now, I think it's dead money at best. And if we stay into it too long, we actually may lose a decent amount of money, and we don't want to do that. So rather than keep the money in here, we'll look for the bounce to get out. And so that's the way I'm going to try to trade that. Elsewhere, you've got some things, uh, you know, PCTY picking up. Uh, the SOX just makes new highs, so is the DXJ. VUG, we just want to stay in. Same thing with XLY. UUP has a target. We should be looking at that target to try to take our profits. And our Google stock, and we could take a quick look here at Google. Uh, Google is problematic right now, and it has been. It's got a lot of negative flow and news flow. It's heading back down to test that earnings low. 518.41. You know, we were able to get in once and get out. We bought some more. We haven't been able to get out of that. So right now, you know, long term, I still like Google a lot. If we look at the monthly on Google, you know, this is not a bad looking chart. The problem is, is if you start breaking these swing point lows, it's going to be on multiple time frames. 5.11 on that number, 5.16 here, excuse me, 5.18 on this number. And if we look at the weekly one, uh, those lows are, of course, that one, and then these 5.11s over here. So if we break down underneath about the 5.10, 5.9 area, this could be a problem, and that's where we've got to monitor it. We don't want to sit in this. Otherwise, it's just a big range trade. In other words, if we come down here and we test and we hold, right, there's just a huge range trade going on, and we're testing the bottom end of that range, and that's okay. Um, you know, if you know if it's a core position, long-term position, it's okay to test the bottom of the range as long as it holds. But if it starts to break down, it's a whole different story, and we have to think about it differently. Because, I mean, Google could trade back to 416, you know, 400, 416. I mean, it could come all the way back down to these lows. So we have to, you know, just be cognizant of what could happen. All right, that uh, pretty much wraps it up for this week. Uh, it's, it's still a bull market, folks, and until it tells us it isn't, we've got to stay with it and keep looking for ways to profit of it. Thanks, take care, and I'll be talking to you as the week goes along. See you next time.